Hello guys, what is going on? Welcome back. I always clap and I don't know why and it always annoys me when I edit. Anyways, what is going on? Welcome back to my channel. I really hope you guys are well. Thank you so much for being here as always. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing something I did a few months ago and it is a kind of like almost a full face of products that I have been sent in PR that I wouldn't necessarily have bought. Like products that I wouldn't automatically go out and buy myself when I saw them on like Instagram, like on Trend Mood or when they were like just launching. And of course, there are many various different reasons for this. A lot of the time, a lot of products just don't interest me and I think this far into the game it takes like a specific kind of product to really kind of like grab my attention whereas a couple of years ago literally I would fucking just buy everything when I had a regular job I would literally spend my entire paycheck on makeup it took me a while to kind of realize that not everything is great and a lot of the times I guess I kind of like wasted my money which is why something like YouTube is so helpful nowadays because you do have people to review everything and like I myself watch reviews on stuff before I buy it obviously everything is like individual and personal and you have to try things for yourself but like I go to YouTube for a lot of product reviews just because I think it's super super helpful and especially if you find someone that you like and that you trust pretty sure everything I just said is not relevant in any kind of way but anyway I just have a selection of products that I have been sent in PR like I said that I wouldn't necessarily have bought myself some of them I'm grateful that they've been sent some of them Maybe not. A lot of the times the stuff I do get sent that I wouldn't have thought to have bought, I actually end up loving. And then some of these are also going to be first impressions, the products that I've never tried before that have just been sat there waiting to be used. So if you guys do enjoy this video, please of course give it a thumbs up for me, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to subscribe to my channel. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, baby. Okay. Jumping straight into my skin then, there are a lot of skin products that I get sent that like it doesn't even dawn on me to buy. There are so many like skincare products nowadays that it's almost kind of difficult to kind of tell like what's going to be really good, what's not going to work for you. There are so many different brands now coming out, like makeup brands coming out with skincare that it can honestly get a little bit overwhelming. I have luckily found some products that work for my skin that I really, really do enjoy. One product that I have been sent that I would not have like, it would never have even been in like my fucking vision of sight to buy is the Instant Moisture Glow from YSL. YSL to me is, I really love them and I love the All Hours Foundation, it's one of my favourite foundations ever, but it's not one of those brands that I really look to when it comes to like new launches. They're not a brand that I really like keep up with. So before this came in PR, I had never heard of it before. I hadn't heard of like many YSL products to be honest and I believe this product is marketed as a moisturiser. This to me is not the type of like moisturiser product that I would go out and purchase myself. But this is apparently YSL's top secret that delivers instant and long-lasting hydration to moisturize skin to glowing perfection anytime, anywhere. It claims to be a silky formula, 72-hour hydration, and instantly revitalizes the look of skin with a fresh, watery effect. Okay. Cool. So this is one of those products that kind of like after receiving it really kind of like piqued my interest and I have been meaning to use this in a few videos. Primarily at first impressions because it's just one of those things again with me that I've just fucking never got run to. The formula is a lot stiffer than I thought it was going to be which I do actually kind of like. When it comes to hydrating products I typically do take them like everywhere just because my skin needs it. Okay, it feels really nice. It's really, really lightweight. And as soon as I start to like rub it into my skin, it goes from a really thick, stiff formula into like this really thin, silky, lightweight formula. Okay, so far I am liking that. The only thing that's like kind of throwing me off is the scent. But other than that, it's made my skin feel really silky, really smooth. And I'm excited to see how my foundation is going to lay on top of this. It feels like one of those products that is going to make my foundation look bomb AF. So, uh, fingers crossed, Hanny. Okay, so moving on to my eyes, I have two, <laughs> two of the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Vault Palettes. Bitch. Bitch. So starting off with the first Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, the big like 32 color eyeshadow one, the actual nice one. That palette is still the tits. It is literally one of my favorite palettes that has ever been released from anybody. It is such a fucking amazing palette. That is one that I 100% would have purchased myself. These I would not have purchased given the reviews on them. Like I said, I do turn to YouTube for a lot of product reviews before I myself go out and buy makeup. I watch a lot of my friends' reviews if they receive PR that I don't receive and it's kind of like a product that I'm interested in. And given the reviews of the Vault Collection, there's four palettes in this collection altogether, this is not a product that I would have felt comfortable investing my money in. Having received these and tried them, honestly, probably still the same opinion. These didn't work great for me. I was kind of disappointed. I don't know if the formula was different and if it was, 
why it was different to the first palette because the first palette was so fucking good it just seems like such an unnecessary thing to change the formula when you have such a winning one obviously these just didn't work as well for me and even like in the realm of morphe eyeshadows these didn't work as well compared to some of morphe's palettes aside from the jackson hill palette so these are definitely on my list of products that i would never purchase based on the fact that the reviews for them were less than satisfactory so the ones i'm going to be using today are ring the alarm and armed and gorgeous so this one right here is ring the alarm it's kind of some nice like dark berry tones orange tones there's some gold in there and then this is armed and gorgeous which is kind of like a nice earthy tone palette so it's got some like deeper oranges a nice bright orange then some like khaki green colors in there as well and i'm almost sure ring the alarm i haven't actually used so that's exciting i am just going to prime my eyes with a p louise base you guys know this is my absolute bridal die and this i did actually purchase myself so and i'm of course going to zoom you guys in so you can see what the fuck is going on Okay, so my eyes are primed, like I said. Okay, so I'm starting off with the Ring the Alarm palette. I'm taking the shade Alert. It's just like a nice, gorgeous orange, duh. And this is a Morphe M514 brush. This could literally go like one of two ways. I really don't know how they're gonna perform. Okay, so like right off the mark, that looks pigmented, but obviously the P. Louise base is gonna make everything look pigmented. If you kind of like fucking dab it in long enough, which I have, like that's taken me so long just to build up that color to like an opaque finish. Yeah, I just kind of feel like it's taking too long to build up like a solid colour. Like the Wet n Wild palette in my last video did it straight away, so I don't know what the issue is here. Yeah, I feel like I'm just dipping back into the palette a lot to try and like build up this colour. Okay, so I'm going to go into the Armed and Gorgeous palette and take the shade Access. Just on the same brush, I'm not too worried about swapping brushes at this point. And I'm going to start blending those edges. I think this is where, last time if I remember correctly, this palette or this collection of palettes started to falter for me. So I'm just really taking my time, going in like small circular motions and also like tapping. I find like that kind of technique of blending really helps me. I don't know why and I don't even know if it is a technique of blending. But kind of like doing circular motions and then like just tapping like that. Almost just kind of like does the work for me. So I'm going back into Ring the Alarm and taking that first shade we went in with and then this shade right here. This is a shade Secret. It's just like a really deep kind of like warm chocolatey brown. Again, just on the same brush. Let's be crazy. And then with the mix of those, I'm just taking it obviously like really deep in my crease. And I'm also just gonna fill in that outer corner because I'm gonna do like a half cut crease. So I want that outer corner to be pretty deep. And I'm gonna switch over to a MAC 221 brush and take that shade access again. And just ever so slightly blend the edges of this. And obviously you don't have to go in with as much kind of darkness as I did, but because my eyes are a little bit hooded, I do cut my crease a little bit higher. So most of this darkness is gonna disappear anyway. Okay, so I'm taking a little bit of Tarte Shape Tape and the P. Louise base again. I'm going to mix these together and cut my crease. And I'm actually going to do it on camera for once, just in case uh, any of you guys haven't seen me do it. So I actually use a couple of brushes for this. I'm going to start off with a P. Louise, like, flat packing brush. These can get, like, super, super skinny, as you can see. So they're perfect for, like, doing a really cut line. So I, of course, just pack that all over my lid. And then I take a look up. And that kind of line is where I know that my eyelid product won't like transfer just because my eyes, like I said, are a bit more hooded. So when I'm happy with like the general shape, I'll go in with like a really teeny tiny flat brush. And this is a, uh, it doesn't say, okay, this one from Morphe, I think it came in a set. I guess it's like an inner corner detail brush, like something like that. So then I'll take this brush with some product and I'll really, really define that line and make it like super, super sharp. So then to set my lid, I'm going to take this Metallic Mysteries palette from Linda Holberg. This is a brand I've never actually heard of. I honestly don't know who sent this to me. It quite possibly might have been Beauty Bay. And when I first saw this, I was kind of like, eh. It kind of just looked like a bit whatever. But then I swatched this shade right here. And like... Holy fuck. It is literally incredible. So initially when I looked at this, it was, ju it was just not a palette that I would purchase for myself. It's not something that kind of interests me. And then when I swatched it, not so much the other three. Like the other three are cool, but they're still really not shades that I would use. But that gold shade, damn. But again, I wouldn't purchase it just for that one gold shade, just because I would never ever use the other three shades. Maybe once, maybe twice. So I'm just going to take a P. Louise flat brush and that gold shade and I'm really hoping this applies the same with the brush. Okay, no. So I'm going to take it on my finger. 
Yes, mama. So word of, not so much like a word of warning, but just be cautious if you do get this. It does apply a lot better when you use your finger rather than a brush. Like it still applies fine with a brush. It just comes out a little more intense when you use your fingers. Okay, I think this is fabulous. I'm honestly like loving this eye look so far. Lastly for my eyes, I'm gonna be taking this heavy metal glitter liner from Uma Decay. This is in the shade Starfire. I think this is, I'm pretty sure this is one of the new ones. Uh, the reason I wouldn't necessarily go out and purchase this is because I just have so many glitters. And honestly, like these Uma Decay ones are nice. The only thing that annoys me is just the amount of product you get off at a time. I like being able to have like a huge pile of glitter and then just like pack it on. So that is probably another reason why I just wouldn't go out and purchase this. So I'm gonna kind of like pop that over it's just a little bit of a topper. I'm not gonna take too much, just a little bit of sparkle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and catch up on my other eye and then I'll be back to do my skin. Okay, so now that my entire face is uh, covered in glitter, we're gonna move on to foundation. And for that, I'm taking the, I'm pretty sure this is new. This is Tarte's Face Tape Foundation. I'm assuming this is the redo of the Diabolical Shape Tape situation. Um, I think they've just repackaged it and called it Face Tape. Who knows? I never actually tried the Shape Tape foundations, so um, it'll be interesting to try this one, and that's kind of the reason why I wouldn't buy this, just because of that whole situation with the Shape Tape foundations. Also, literally until this arrived at my door and I opened it, I did not even know this was coming out. So maybe that's another reason why I wouldn't have got it. I'm gonna take the shade 12B Fair Beige, and I'm also gonna mix it with a little bit of the shade 18B, which is Fair Light Beige. And I'm actually just gonna take that on the sponge that came in the PR package. This is Tarte's Marble Sponge never actually tried this either, so that'll be interesting as well. Looking for a mirror. Okay, so a little seems to go a long way. I didn't actually put that much on the sponge. And the coverage seems pretty good. I'm also really liking this sponge. It's super, super soft and it's doing a really good job of blending. Honestly, like I put hardly anything on the sponge and it just seems to like never stop. <laughs> I mean, honestly, so far just going off like straight away first impressions, I'm really liking this foundation. <laughs> it just, it seems like you really don't need a lot. Pretty sure I did two pumps of each foundation, which seems like a lot, but I wear a lot of makeup and I have a very fucking big head. Three, four pumps is normally like what I use for my entire face. And of what I pumped out and mixed, I've literally used about a quarter and it's covered pretty much my whole face. So my foundation is now all on and I have to say, I am really, really liking this. I'm also really, really loving this sponge. It's super, super soft. And I normally like a sponge with a little bit more firmness to it, but this is um, this is really, really nice. I'll be honest, I am liking this foundation a lot more than I thought I would. I am loving the finish. On me at the moment, it's kind of like a satin, just like really natural like skin finish kind of finish. <laughs> the YSL, what's it called? The Instant Moisture Glow from YSL is giving me a little bit of ever so slight dewiness, which is really nice. So I'm imagining that this foundation is not matte, but a little bit more, almost like a demi-matte, I guess. Just sets a little bit more than it currently is if I was just to use like a regular primer. So I'm going to move on to concealer. I'm going to take the Morphe concealer. This is the old one. And I'm also going to take the Huda Beauty Overachiever concealer. Now the reason why I wouldn't buy the Morphe concealer for myself is because this launch at a time when I didn't really like trust Morphe with anything other than eyeshadows and brushes. And I know that sounds like absolutely ridiculous, but obviously Morphe is a company that does or did, I don't know if they still do now, but a company that private labeled. So I don't know, just something in me didn't really trust their products that weren't eyeshadows. I know that sounds like absolutely ridiculous, but obviously something like concealer, especially to me, is something that's a very specific product. There's not many concealers that I like absolutely love. Being real, Morphe was not one of the brands that I would have initially trusted for concealer. Um, but I will send it, I have used this a few times. I do like it, like I don't mind it at all. It is a little bit of like a thicker pasty kind of formula. So I'm going to pop a little bit of this down. This is in the shade Sand. And then the Huda Beauty Concealer, I'm going to take the shade Whipped Cream. The one thing I do like about this concealer is like the applicator. I think it's a really cool aspect. That This is like super cold all the time, so it helps with and dry bags, I guess, is the concept of it. So the reason why I would not buy this concealer, honestly, the first time I tried it, I really did not like it at all. Another reason is, and I have said this in the past, Huda Beauty is not one of those brands that like really jumps out at me as, I don't know, kind of like an interesting brand, I guess. I mean, that sounds a little bit harsh, but it's definitely not one of those brands that I feel like 
like I have to have every product from or purchase every product from. Honestly, sometimes it is just a case of a brand or a product from a brand just literally doesn't interest me upon like first seeing it. So I think it's easy for eyeshadow palettes for me to kind of just like say yes or no, you know, fucking thank you next. So for like a concealer, I really, really need to be interested. Like it has to like fucking grab my attention or kind of like the revolution one or like with shape tape, there has to be a fucking ton of people saying good things about it for me to like kind of be like ooh so to bronze my cheeks, I'm going to take the Jennifer Lopez and Inglot Collab bronzer. Now, I'm using this because uh, I don't actually use anything from Inglot. Um, I haven't actually got anything from Inglot apart from the JLo Collab. I used to use the gel eyeliner in the shade 77. Honest to God, like the best gel eyeliner ever. But yeah, now they're just um, they're a brand that I don't really keep up with. I honestly didn't even know JLo was doing a collab with them. And um, when I think of Inglot and their products, I think bronzer is, again, like one of those products that I just would not purchase from them. Although I'm really really happy that I was sent this because I absolutely fucking love this bronzer. It's got like a really stunning level of warmth to it. You guys know how I am with bronzers and this one kind of just like really really does it for me. I think it blends beautifully. It almost reminds me of the Elsie one which is one that I am obsessed with. For highlighting I'm going to go in with the Tartus Pro Glow to Go palette from Tarte. Again this is just one of those products that like upon initial like viewing just didn't interest me and even if I saw it now it probably wouldn't interest me at all. And two of these shades I don't don't even use but this top shade is everything. I remember when I tried this for the first time I was shooketh. It is one of those formulas that's a little bit more kind of like foily so even though it is gorgeous it does tend to like sit on top of the skin which obviously isn't something that I like when it comes to highlighters but um I just love I really really like this one man. If you manage to kind of like work it right and blend it right it doesn't sit on the skin too much and then it just has like a really gorgeous kind of like wet finish kind of glow which is a highlighter finish that I am totally on board with. This also gives me like major throwbacks because I used to use this all the time, religiously. Back in the day when I first started, this was literally my shit. And it's funny because on like initial impression, it's a product that I never ever would have thought to have picked up myself, which would have been a travesty because it is beautiful. On to blush and I have this Pixie Glow Cake 3-in-1 Luminous Transition Powder from Pixie. This to me is just a fucking big giant blush. I think it's supposed to be essentially like a bronzer into a blush into a highlight. At least that's what this Neapolitan situation kind of tells me. A uh, reason for not purchasing something like this would be I don't really like palettes like this that are like a gradient and I would never really purchase a product that is like a bronzer, a blush and a highlight all in one. I don't like bronzers that are like gradient. I can just about handle a blush that's gradient. I mean, it's definitely cute, like it's nice. You guys know how I feel about blush and uh, this color payoff is not really doing it for me. And also another thing I have said before, I don't really like blushes with shimmer in them. I make some exceptions like Luminoso because it's just absolutely stunningly beautiful. But yeah, this one I'm not really feeling. I mean, it's nice, it is nice. I will give it to it. But then again, like out of the whole thing, I would literally use this tiny little middle section. That's why I tend not to buy like highlight palettes and contour palettes because I just feel like I just would not use half of it and it's such a waste. It's great if you're a makeup artist, I guess, or you feel like you are going to use those other colors. I don't know, I feel like I've got a very specific paper white skin tone that I uh, can't really get away with much. Okay, I do actually quite like that blush. So lastly for my lips, I'm also going in with another product from Pixie. These are the Pixie Liquid Lipsticks. Honestly, the reason for these is just that I really haven't seen like anyone talk about them. And when I think of liquid lipstick, the first brand that pops into my head isn't Pixie. I'm not actually sure if I've tried any of these yet. I have a few of them. I'm going to take the shade Matte Beige. Love the colour. The scent is actually really nice. It's kind of like orange zesty, which might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I really, really like that. Okay, obsessed with the colour. I love the formula of this so far. It's kind of like drying down nicely, but it's not like an uncomfortable dry matte. I have got a lip oil on, so I think that might be helping it, but um, so far I really, really like this. I'm gonna take a little gloss. This is a mini white Russian from Buxom. This is one of my favorite glosses of all time. And honestly, I'm including this because when it comes to gloss, I really don't purchase glosses. I used to be like super anti-gloss. I know that sounds fucking ridiculous, but I used to just be like in it for the matte lipsticks. Like I was, fucking mad all the way and it was only after I started getting scent glosses that I would like use them and now I am obsessed. I think Buxom lip glosses are phenomenal. Honestly the finish of them is like a blurring primer for your lips. Oh, I just I just love them. Love them. Love them. 
Okay then guys, so that brings us to the very end of today's video. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoy this look. Obviously this is such a fucking go-to for me, so I am loving it. And it's funny to me because obviously all these products are included because I never would have thought to have purchased them and some of them I absolutely love. <laughs> One thing I have really enjoyed from today's video is the Tarte foundation. Definitely can't wait to use this again. I really, really do like this. Currently I'm also really loving the Pixi lipstick. The eyes didn't turn out like bad at all considering my uh, previous experiences with the Jaclyn Hill Vault collection. It definitely came together in the end. It's not my favorite, like they're just not my favorite eyeshadows and they never will be, but I definitely think they worked better for me this time than they did the previous time I've used them. But all in all, I am super, super happy with this look. I really hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, please give it a thumbs up for me, subscribe to my channel if you want to subscribe to my channel. I'd love to know some products that you guys kind of see on like social media and stuff and just think like, nah, not for me. If there are any, of course, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you and I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye, guys.